I'm gonna start with one of the most important things about this new Bronco, and that's the cool factor. When you pump gas or go to the ball field or really anything in a new Bronco, it really doesn't matter what trim level it is. If it's shaped like the new Bronco at all, you're gonna have people talk to you at the pump. I've spent probably a combined three or four hours talking to people about this thing since I got it because they've not seen a lot of them. There's not a ton of them rolling around. I've probably had 50 different conversations with different people and they all say the same thing. As soon as I can get a Bronco, you know, at a good price, a couple years old used, I'm gonna get one. Guys, I wouldn't hold my breath. I don't see anything anytime soon that says you're gonna be able to go to a used car lot and buy a Bronco for $27,000 with 50,000 miles on it. I think we're a long time from that. If you go to buy a Jeep right now, you get sticker shock on a used one with 150,000 miles and you're like, you want what for that? That's gonna be the same thing on this Bronco. We've had our new first edition Bronco for just over six months, right at 5,000 miles. We've used this as a daily driver. We've been on longer road trips. We've even been to Windrock Off-Road Park. Whether you have the new Bronco or if you want the new Bronco, this video is gonna tell you everything unique that's happened in our first 5,000 miles. Very surprisingly, this thing is pretty awesome at highway speeds. Right now, we're just over 60 miles an hour. Even on the interstate where I do 70 to 80 miles an hour, I don't hear a lot of tire roar. I don't have the engine being underpowered, and this is the larger V6 engine, but even in the four-cylinder we've driven on the interstate, it's definitely not underpowered. This feels great. I think the engine matches the size of the vehicle really well. The brakes are great. I've got all the adaptive tech on this with it being a first edition, but it makes a great daily driver, whether you're doing a long 45 minute interstate commute or just putting around town. One thing I will say about the top is in this first section, if you have the hard top, if you have the soft top, different set of problems, but on the two front pieces that you can take off very easily, store in a bag and put in the back of your Bronco, I'm experiencing what a lot of other people are and that's a little clink. There's a metal pin that slides down in a hole up here on one of these and it's clinking at me. A lot of people are getting it right over the driver's side head. It drives me crazy, but it is something that either me or Ford is gonna be able to fix. We've already seen some videos of people doing something that makes that clink go all the way away. But other than that one clink, there's not a lot of air noise or anything coming through that I would say is totally unacceptable on this Bronco top. It's not luxury car quiet in here, but it's definitely not loud and obnoxious. A lot of people ask about gas mileage, and you can see that I'm getting 16.6 .6 miles per gallon, and that's over 4,918 miles, which is all but maybe 15 miles that we've had the Bronco. 16 and a half is not great, but this is absolutely an off-road vehicle that we choose to drive mostly on road, so we were not expecting to get much better than that anyway. So Brad was telling me that in the Bronco, he's always hot from his shoulders up. And what is that all about? So the more I've thought about it, this top is not extremely mm. insulated. It's got some carpeting on it. That's a sound deadener, not necessarily a buffer for heating um, from coming from outside. It's 80 degrees right now. And I can tell you right now that from about here up, it is warmer. And it's gotta be from the sun that's hitting this dark, dark gray, almost black top. Um, when you put your hand up there, Sam, do you feel that heat? Like you can start to feel the heat from the roof right in here. I mean, you can feel it radiating down and the closer you get, the warmer it gets. So yeah, I mean, it's this whole level up here is just warmer. So uh, you gotta take these vents and you gotta put them up on your face. Some people don't like air blowing on their face, um, but that's something that you gotta kind of think about. It's just an observation I've had, not the end of the world. Okay, so let's talk about side steps. We have the rock slide engineering step sliders. They drop down and deploy. So if you don't plan to off-road this, you may or may not want these. I'm gonna show you a couple cool factors about them, but if you're just gonna strictly drive this thing to town, you may just want some less expensive bolt-on steps that get you a little bit further down, especially if you got Sasquatch where you're up in the air a little higher, but you still, you know, you want that look, but you're gonna drive it in town mostly. With these rock sliders, and that'll go up as soon as uh, I shut the door. This is actually a heavy duty, I mean, this is bolted into the frame where the frame meets the body. We had to take the body bolts out to do this install. You can set the weight of the whole vehicle right here when you're off-roading and it's gonna hold every bit of it. One thing we picked up with these that we were not expecting is that if somebody jumps out, family of four jumps out in their Tahoe and 
opens their door up they're gonna hit right here into your step slider that's made of big old thick steel and yeah it'll probably scratch the powder coated paint off but it's not gonna go into the side of your new Bronco door so let me talk about this rear cargo door because I've got some pretty strong thoughts on this yes it's awesome guys this makes it a unique cool vehicle it's more Bronco-esque our 96 Bronco that we've done a ton of things to on this channel uh, you got to roll the glass down through the keyhole and then flip it down like a tailgate that you have to reach inside so yeah it's way less convenient than swinging this door out but you got this gigantic 35 inch tire weighs over 100 pounds this spring inside of this shock is extremely heavy um, when I say heavy I mean to pull this thing open it's got a lot of tension to it and it doesn't want to just swing up especially as you get it out further and that's keeping you from whacking it into somebody else in a parking lot the door has to be out pretty far to be able to get this up now i've got two kids play travel ball we probably open this back gate 10 times a day it's less convenient than the old you know looks like every other suv swing up rear door we don't want that that's why we buy the bronco uh, but it is a little less convenient to be able to get into the back real quick you can't just flip the glass up the glass has to be closed and then the door shuts and there's no way to pull that glass up um, and you can't obviously roll it down even if you could it would be a hard reach to go get all the way in there and we got a lot of crap from you guys when we did a daily driver video with this bronco it's over 20 minutes long we'll put it in the end card and we'll put it down in the description so you can get there quick but a lot of people were hating because they were saying it's an off-road vehicle it's not meant to be a daily driver well i got about 100,000 people that have watched it that would disagree with you and i would say out of the maybe 200 300,000 broncos that they've moved so far i would say 90 percent of them are going to be pavement crawlers that have the look they look awesome but they're going to go off road maybe five times in their life this is a daily driver vehicle guys it's made to off-road but most people that buy it are going to daily drive it and that's why these things matter for anybody that wants to go off-road drive some trails through your local state parks or go to your off-road park locally you can do just about anything with this if you don't want to do any of that stuff having the sasquatch package having all the buttons being able to do all that stuff is really cool and i think the lifestyle part of this is what draws so many people to the new bronco this thing will do anything you want it to do off-road and then some it doesn't complain it does it really easy in our time at winrock we did some decent little maybe moderate type things but it didn't struggle to do anything and i know there's a ton of videos on the internet of people doing every hardcore trail across the world and this will do it this is an ultimate off-road vehicle right out of the box sync 4 comes on any of the new broncos whether you've got this big screen or the smaller screen you have a lot of real estate this thing runs flawlessly better than any onboard system that i've ever had if you got your phone plugged in and you can even do it wirelessly you can use your apple maps or your android auto it all works flawlessly all the time i love it it's probably the best system i've seen in any vehicle so far we got to talk about the windshield this was in our daily driving video but after putting quite a few more miles like 3,000 more miles on it now i catch a rock almost every single day i'm blown away that this thing doesn't have three or four little spider cracks in it I do have one little chip on the other side it's straight up and down almost guys this is a very steep angle if you're driving a traditional suv the glass slants a whole lot more and that stuff just seems to like shed off of it a lot easier you're gonna break your windshield if you drive this thing 100,000 miles. I don't think there's any secret to that. That's just something I've observed in the first 5,000. All right, fellas, if you own a truck, any brand or size, you're gonna wanna hear about Roadmaster Active Suspension. And because we value your time and they sponsored this video, we've taken out all of the mid-video ads. We personally use this product on our trucks and it's awesome for towing. On top of that, it makes driving sportier and more planted when you're not towing. This easy to install product doesn't allow you to tow over the limits of your truck, but it does make towing way easier when you stay within the limits of your truck's ability. We've tried everything when it comes to towing, even airbags. This is the best product your hard earned money can buy. I'll put a link to their website in the description below so you guys can go check them out. Use promo code BACKRO10 to get your BACKRO driver discount. One big thing I'm seeing with this truck, I mean, we're talking 5,000 miles. This rear fender right here is getting eat up by rocks. 
Now we cleaned this thing up really nice for this video. We've got stealth PPF protection on here. I just rubbed boost on here to kind of clean this up and it still looks kind of bad right in here. And you can see there's probably 75 places where a rock's hit in here. I mean, it's all over the place and you can feel it with your fingers. So these fender flares in the back are going to catch a lot of rocks and that's just from daily driving. Yes, we took this thing to Windrock, but I promise you when we left, these were in good shape still. They look kind of bad now for a vehicle of this age. Almost every video of anybody talking about the sound system in the new Bronco says it's bad. This has the B&O upgraded system. It does me just fine. Sam, on the other hand, is an audiophile. He has the B&O Unleashed system in his new F-150, and he had to still go add an additional sub to it. If you don't have to have Little Wayne and Little Big Town and all the Littles bumping real loud, uh, with bass, you're gonna be fine. It's a good sound system. It costs a whole lot to get it in here, but trying to retrofit something aftermarket sucks. If you bought a four door, you can take all four doors off, put them in these bags, store the bags in the back, be able to put them on somewhere else, say after you get done eating two hours away. It doesn't really work out that practically. And the reason is they're very hard to put in these bags. I do suggest go ahead and getting your bag started before you take the door off. They're clunky to get the doors off just a little bit. But the big thing I wanna say here is these bags are not big enough to fit these doors. I mean, it's super tight to get them on. And if you pack them up in the back or even if you just leave them in the bags in storage, they're gonna leave big indentions. Even on this higher trim level, this foam right here is not gonna bounce back for about two weeks after you've had these in here and stored them. You do wanna go buy what's on the actual bag itself. It'll tell you which side of the vehicle, they're very specific. And it'll also tell you the order that you need to go in to put these in the back. It's not the simplest thing in the world. I don't know how they could have made it simpler. It does work, it's just tight. Um, not the best way to store them. I would suggest having some kind of rack built where you could take these off. I'm sure people are already making them in the aftermarket. Being able to store them in your garage, like stacked and on some padding, some pool noodle type padding and be able to put them back on without having to store them in these bags. If you want to see our wind rock video, click here. If you want to see our video on, is this a good daily driver? Click here. If you like automotive content, hit that subscribe button down below. Give this video a thumbs up. We appreciate you guys watching to the end. We caught the guy in the Jeep staring at us through the mirror. He's got him. Oh, a, there it is again. Yeah, I'm looking. <laughs> they can't help themselves.